Before we start taking the questions, I would like to speak for a few minutes on the Beirut explosion, the actions to be taken and lessons to be learned. As many of you may be aware, four days ago, there was a massive explosion in Beirut on Tuesday, on the 4th of August 2020, at 6 o'clock in the evening, that's Beirut time, or 3 p.m. GMT. And in this massive explosion, it was one of the greatest explosions in the recent time, in which more than 150 people were killed and more than 5,000 people were injured and more than 300,000 people became homeless. According to the president of Lebanon, the cause of this massive explosion in Beirut was because of 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate that was stored in the Beirut port in warehouse number 12. And this 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate was stored about seven years ago in 2013 when a ship was traveling from Gibraltar to Mozambique and it halted on the Beirut port and there was a technical problem in that ship because of which it had to stop in Beirut and the owner of the ship he abandoned the ship because of which a court order was taken where this 2750 tons of ammonium nitrate was stored at the Beirut port in warehouse number 12. Actually, this 2750 ton, it was supposed to be sold or disposed of. Even though several reminders were sent to the court and to the government by the port authorities for the last several years, no action was taken. This ammonium nitrate is actually used as a source of nitrogen for agriculture fertilizers. It's also used along with fuel and oil for explosives, for mining or in construction industry. It has also been used by militants as an explosive. Actually, this ammonium nitrate to store is very safe as long as you take precaution. But if you do not take precautions, over time it may absorb the moisture it may turn into a rock and it's very dangerous that it can be infamous. According to the manager of the port of Beirut, there was a request for repairing the door of warehouse 12 and because of which they were doing some welding to the door of the warehouse number 12 and after that he doesn't know. According to reports we have come to know that there was a fire at the Beirut port at 6 o'clock Lebanon time, very close to warehouse number 12. And later on, the roof of the warehouse number 12 caught fire at 6 o'clock Lebanon time. And few seconds later, there were many explosions. People thought it was fireworks. And 30 seconds later, there was an enormous, massive explosion which ruined many structures and buildings around the vicinity of the port and the effects were for kilometers and the windows of the international port of Beirut which is nine kilometers away from the site of explosion the windows were shattered 200 kilometers across the Mediterranean Sea the explosion could be heard in Cyprus According to the reading, they said the explosion was equal to 3.3 scale of earthquake. It was massive. 
because of this explosion there was a crater created of 140 meters wide and very deep at the site of the warehouse where water accumulated and there was a ship which was closed which was blown to the dock because of the explosion and in this explosion more than 150 innocent human beings were killed more than 5000 people were injured according to the mayor of Beirut more than 300,000 people became homeless and the population of Beirut is approximately 2 million so 15% of the population of Beirut they became homeless and half to 1 million people directly or indirectly were affected by this blast this was an accident it was negligence what action should be taken I request the Muslim all over the world that the least we can do is pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people who are affected by this blast and as we know more than 61% of the population of Lebanon they are Muslims more than 52% of the population of Beirut they are Muslims and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he forgive the Muslims who have died in this blast and may grant them Jannah and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he ease the difficulties of the Muslim and non-Muslim families who have died in this blast may he elevate and may he make it easy for the people who have been affected in this blast may he give shifa may he cure the people who have been injured in this blast and may he give shelter to the people who have become homeless and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the suffering of all those people of Lebanon who have been affected directly or indirectly in this blast the least the Muslims can do is pray for the people affected by this blast the second thing we can do is we can support financially whatever we can to help the victims of this blast and alhamdulillah there are many charities Muslim and non-Muslim NGOs in Lebanon and in different parts of the world which have started collecting funds we have in America and European countries and different parts of the world and alhamdulillah I request the Muslims that whatever your capacity with the big or small whatever you can you should become part and try and support this noble cause with whatever amount that we can the third we can do is those people in Lebanon or in Beirut who have not been affected by this blast should support the people who have been affected by this blast there may be people of Lebanon who may be less affected they can support the people who have been more affected we require volunteers at the ground level to help the people who are injured to help the people who have become homeless to help the people who may not have food to eat because of the situation that took place suddenly because of the massive explosion because of this blast whatever we can physically because of the pandemic which is there the COVID-19 it may be difficult for the foreigners to enter Lebanon but yet there are people who are trying whoever can physically support they should and last what we can do is try and spread this message that we should not be negligent about the information of the blast the actions to be taken and the lessons to be learned what can we as Muslims learn from this tragedy number one we should not be negligent this tragedy happened because of negligence we should see to it that we should be careful and we should take precautions wherever required for example we should see to it that in our home we have the kitchen many people keep the gas open unattended there may be someone who lights a fire and there can be explosion in the kitchen we keep and we store things inflammable in the wrong place which is wrong and we may not be careful in how 
we store the inflammable items. All these are lessons to be learned that we have to be careful and we should not be negligent. The second thing to be learned is that we do not know when will be our last day of our life in this world. Normally, many of the Muslims, we pray for the Muslims all over the world that are suffering. And I too, every tahajjud, I pray for all the Muslims in the world who are suffering. And I particularly take the names of the people who are suffering more. And I start with the people, the Muslims in China, in Xinjiang, who are in concentration camps, who are being persecuted, who are being oppressed. The Muslims in Burma, the Rohingya, in the Rakhine state, many people have left their homes, millions are staying as refugees in other countries, I pray for them. Even the Muslims of Palestine, the Muslims of Syria, the Muslims in Yemen, the Muslims in Afghanistan, the Muslims in Kashmir, the Muslims of India that are being persecuted by the Indian government, the Muslims in Bangladesh, and the list is long. I take the names of the people who are more persecuted, but generally we pray for all the Muslims, even the others which are being persecuted in different parts of the world. We know that amongst the Muslim countries in the world that are there, maybe 25% are being persecuted on a great level because of the persecution maybe in China or maybe in Burma or maybe in Palestine or Syria or Yemen because of persecution or because of war. There may be another percentage that may be less persecuted or less oppressed. There may be some living in a country where there may be very little problem for them. And many a time these people living in the country where there is not a major problem may think and pray for the people, for the Muslims of other parts of the world, but they may think that these people, because of the war zone, may die any time. But they may never think that even they too can face a calamity. And what happened in Beirut? I'm sure that almost all the people who may have been killed they may never have thought that that was going to be the last day of their life. They might never have thought that they will never see the next day in their life. So it's a lesson for us that irrespective of whichever part of the world you are living in, irrespective of what is your age, irrespective of what is your status, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are healthy or sick, you may never know when will be the last day of your life. That's the reason a Muslim normally should lead a life and should be prepared that maybe today is the last day of his life. So what should he do? We should take a lesson from this, that we should be prepared to face our Lord if we are to die today. And for this, we should see to it that we should do all our faraiz and stay away from the haram activities. We should see to it that we believe in Tawheed that we pray five times a day, that we do all the faraiz and we stay away from the haram, the major sins and the minor sins also. If we are sure that we do all the faraiz and if we are staying away from the major sins and we every day ask for forgiveness in our salah, in our tahajjud, then even though as we are human beings and we do sins, we can always hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we pray for forgiveness, when we do istighfar, inshallah Allah will forgive us. So if every day we offer salah and we ask for forgiveness for all the sins we are doing, if Allah forbid we have to die that day, inshallah it will be a great blessing for us and inshallah there are high chances that we shall enter Jannah. So this is a lesson to be learned that we don't know how long we will live. We should be prepared that we will die today. At the same time, we should plan for our future. What we are going to do tomorrow, maybe after a few weeks, or a few months, or a few years. This is what a moment, a believer does. He plans for the future, but is prepared 
that he can die today. He may not live to see tomorrow. This is a lesson for us. What happened in Lebanon was accident. It was negligence. It can happen in any part of the world. Maybe we too can face a calamity. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he forgive our sins and may he make us pray for the victim throughout the world, including the Beirut blast. And may we learn lessons from these incidents so that we can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.